So guys, today we're going to be going over my July 2017 Everyday Carry. Now you guys have already seen my girlfriend's Everyday Carry for July, so it's time that I show you mine. And before we go any further, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And without, for and without any further ado, let's get into this. So guys, before going into what is in the pants and all what's the setup with this, I'm going to go over what's on my body aside from the pants. So starting off, as always, I'm rocking Oakley Radar Locks, and I've been rocking these for a few years. They're really awesome, high quality sunglasses, and of course, using sunglasses a ton because it's super sunny during the summer up here in Alaska. So that is number one. So aside from that, I'm rocking a good old, my good old Pull Force November 1. Still is a neck knife, very good defensive option for a neck knife and kind of a survival option because I'm not running any belt knives right now. So I'm just rocking this knife for defense and slash kind of survival. So once again, it's the Pull Force November 1. This is the Gen 1 of the November 1. So aside from that, I'm also rocking just one of my paracord bracelets. I switched this up and it's kind of interchangeable, but at this particular moment, this is just a dragon teeth. Uh, so that's what this bracelet is. So next, new change up for watches, as been alluded to in the other Everyday Carry video. Uh, I'm now running a Seiko SNK803. And I've been watch or rocking this watch now for a little over a week. I've been really liking it. Now, the reason why I switched over to this uh, smaller watch, as you guys know, in the past, I'd been running the Timex Expedition Sierra. But what I really didn't like about the Sierra was, at least for me personally, I always felt that it was a very big watch and it had a lot of features to it. And when I got that watch, it was the very first wristwatch I'd ever got, like a serious uh, wristwatch. And so I really didn't know quite all the features that I really wanted in a watch. But as of course I wore it for several months and I kind of got accustomed to what I was using and what I wasn't using, I went over to the Seiko because this is a lot better suited for what I actually use, what I actually like to have, and what I actually need to have in a watch. And so with this watch, as you guys can see, well hopefully you can kind of tell it's substantially smaller than the Expedition Sierra. And at the same time, it's dropped, you guys probably can't really see uh, and with all the reflection, but it's also dropped all the chronograph features. And that's because I really just was not using the chronograph features. I thought when I had originally gotten the Expedition Sierra that I was gonna use the chronograph features more, but in all honesty, I really never did. So with this watch, the only features it has is of course second, minute, hour, and then it has day and date. And I actually really liked having day and date, especially I liked having date on the other one, but that's all it had. So this was a lot better, more welcome change because it had the day and date. So I like that feature more than having all the uh, different chronograph features. So that is what I really liked about this watch. It is also an automatic watch, which was something that I wanted to try out over a quartz watch. There are advantages and disadvantages to all the different types of movements, but that's just uh, a personal style and preference that I wanted to try out with this Seiko. So that is the watch update, and that's why I changed over to this smaller field watch as opposed to the larger Expedition Sierra. Okay guys, so now let's dig into this whole mess of pants. And so to start off with these pants, and I kind of wanted to do this, I don't always roll in my pants for the everyday carry, but I wanted to roll these in just as a fact to kind of show you guys that even still two years later, I'm running and still love this Carhartt Ripstop Cargo Pant is what these are. And these are still amazing pants. For anyone who is not aware of these pants or just likes 5 11. If you guys like the 511 tactical pants or if you like really any of the tactical pants that are out there on the market, this is a really awesome pair that's really underrated still and not a whole lot of people know about. And so I'm still running and this is in one of the newer colorations. This is the khaki color. This was not one of the original colors for these pants and I'm actually wearing 
one of the original colors of the cargo pants here but this is a newer color and so i'm rocking these because i actually really like this khaki color and i think a lot of you guys will really for things like bushcrafting hiking hunting and especially everyday carry because as you guys can see there's two pretty generous sized cargo pant pockets and lots of side pockets to add to the cargo so it's like not just the cargo pants but there's actual side pockets you guys can see so there's so many ways to set up these pants and make them carry all the gear that you really need even a lot more gear than you really actually now let's get into the gear that's on these pants so something I did want to note back with my June carry I was actually carrying a Glock 21 back then I just forgot to mention it but for the setup uh, in June and July and for the next foreseeing months whenever I can I'm obviously going to college so I can't always have this I can't have this when I'm at college but whenever I'm not at college like on the weekends and I'm just adventuring or doing whatever if it's not in places where the gun is restricted I'm going to have this gun and this gun for those who don't know is a Glock 21 and if that's the 45 auto i'm amazed at the people who don't know what the glock 21 is but it's the full sized 45 auto glock and i'm just rocking a full mag of these are hornady something or rather i forget now what the uh, name of these are but you guys can see there but these are a hornady round and this gun holds 13 rounds it's a double stack 45. i've been actually had this gun for years but i'm now really starting to reliably get into carrying it every single day it certainly is quite a piece to carry it's quite heavy but i really love this gun. excellent hiking and adventuring gun for the holster that it's in for those who don't know this is a pretty infamous hold Ah, pretty infamous holster. This is the Blackhawk Serpa Retention Holster. A lot of people gave this holster a lot of trash talk early on, but honestly, I still love this holster, and I really love this holster for the fact that with my lifestyle, I do a lot of adventuring. Everything from horseback riding, snowmobiling, four-wheeling, hunting, hiking, so much outdoor adventure. So I really need a holster that will not let go of the gun at all, especially this gun. What a lot of people don't realize is fully loaded. This gun weighs like two pounds. So this is no joke. And a Kydex holster, especially while doing something like horseback riding, would not be enough to hold this gun in. So while a lot of people may think that this is just a stupid holster or it's horrible because you could possibly shoot yourself because you get on the trigger too fast, like some stupid trash like that, but that's just not the case for me and proper training makes this holster excellent and once again due to the fact of how good the retention is that this gun will not come out of the holster under any circumstance unless you depress the paddle uh, that really works well for my lifestyle and what i need uh, in a hole and this in particular i carry two mags one because obviously having a backup mag is pretty handy to have but secondly because i live in fairbanks especially with hiking and doing a lot of the adventures i do a lot of times i will be going from an urban environment to a rural or not so urban or just straight woodsy environment and in those woodsy environments there tends to be more wildlife things like bears moose wolves all that kind of stuff and so these are more of a uh, wildlife round these are these ones i know because i hand loaded them these are hornady xtp 200 grains and these are plus p loaded and so these carry quite a punch with them and like i said i specifically loaded them and being that the glock itself can take plus p loadings not all guns can take plus p but the glock can so these are plus p loaded rounds and like i said they carry quite a bit of punch for wildlife and so i will often switch between these are the urban rounds and these are the wildlife rounds and so if i go into an area that's more wildlife or more woodsy where the chance of seeing wildlife or dangerous wildlife goes up then i'll just switch over to these so that whole long conversation about the gun and the ammo out of the way finally now let's get into some of the other gear so other stuff i have on the belt this of course if i forgot to mention sits on the belt of course and then what else sits on the belt is my leatherman surge i've been needing to use the leatherman surge quite a bit on the belt lately so i've added this back to the belt in addition to or speaking of the belt 
in use here. This is an old school Alpenlore belt. And the reason why I primarily uh, went over to the Alpenlore belt, for a while I was just carrying a normal army or military really issued uh, webbing belt. And those work really great. And what I liked about the webbing belt was that it's more easy to use tech locks on than this belt is. This belt is just a little too thick for tech locks, but because I haven't been really running any knives that use tech locks here of late, and I've been running the gun, I went over to my Alpenlore because the Alpenlore is significantly thicker or it's quite a thick belt. And so it sits a gun on it nicely, especially when you're doing more vigorous tasks like running, it actually sits a gun on it a lot better because once again, there's more surface here for the shelf of the holster to sit on. And so it sits guns a lot better to on. other things. So to this side here, down here in this little pouch, this button pouch, I just have my Innova XS down here and just a great overall flashlight, tiny little flashlight. It does not produce a whole lot of lumens, like 110 lumens max output, but it works just fine for lighting up a situation if it's dark. Um, and overall it just works really well for being a nice everyday carry flashlight for the summer up here in Alaska. Of course, as you guys have probably been staring at here in this button pouch is where I carry both of my writing instruments. So of course the good old Fisher Space pen right here and then next to it a good old black Sharpie. So these have actually been getting a ton of use and I'm super glad I carry both the Sharpie and the uh, Fisher Space pen. So that's what sits in the, that pocket there. As for this side, nothing at this time sits in any of this, not this cargo or this pocket here. So now on to what's up in these upper pockets. So on this side, of course, still rocking and loving this Benchmade 556 in black. And then, if I can get this on here, then of course the classic good old HTC 1M9 in my case. Then up here in the change pocket is where I always carry my Victorinox Classic SD. And then to this side, of course, the good old Chris Reeves Knives Sabenta 21. Now I did flip these two, and the primary reason I flipped these two is because I was beginning to notice on these pants, and actually consistently on all of my Carhartts, that the titanium uh, of this handle was rubbing with the Victorinox up here and it was actually rubbing holes consistently right around here. So I switched the uh, Chris Reeves over here because this plastic handled knife will not rub a hole whereas the titanium mixed with the plastic of this knife does actually over time like over the course of a few months it actually wears a hole like straight through there. So I noticed that and that's why the Chris Reeves Sabenza is on this side instead of on this side as it usually was. Then in here, I just have some keys and then I have the good old classic Zippo. This isn't quite a classic, I guess, but just a good old Zippo in there. So anyways, now on to the flip side of this. Now it's all dirty. <laughs> Anyways, so on this side is my wallet and I carry this on this side, left side, because the gun sits like this and I tend to carry my gun more further back. So it sits right about here on the actual pants. Yeah, I can pull this down a little bit better. So it sits about like this and that makes anything in here. Aviation tonight, can't really do anything about it. But like I was saying, when you have a gun sitting here, that makes it really hard to access things in this back right pocket. So I carry the wallet on the left side so that I can still easily access whatever I need to get at. And then of course on this side, since it is easier to slip this out, this is where I carry just a normal green bandana. Anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at my July EDC. I know mine's a little bit more comprehensive than my girlfriend's and it took a little bit longer to explain everything, but that is my full comprehensive EDC. I didn't want to miss anything this time because in my June one, like I, said, I missed like the gun and the magazine and some stuff. So I wanted to make sure to cover everything this time and hopefully, uh, to my knowledge, I didn't miss anything. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you guys learned from my setup how you you guys can set up your own setups for everyday carry and anyways guys as always that's all for now and i'm out